Well, with the way things are currently, I guess this is the right kind of sword for me. It's kind of chunky. This is a shudao, which apparently translates to hand knife from the Song Dynasty. And this is definitely one of the widest blades I've tested. Speaking of testing, I've put it through its paces last year, actually, around October 2021. And uh, I was planning to do more testing with it. But upon a second look, I found that I actually have plenty of footage. I did quite a bit of testing already, so that should suffice. So we're going to take a look at it. Obviously, what's striking about it at first glance is the shape overall. It's kind of blocky, you know, like it's a straight blade, again, fairly wide with not really much of a point. I would hesitate to even call that a tanto point because it's almost straight. It's just got a very slight angle there. Uh, could you thrust with this? I'm sure some of you are wondering. Yeah, yeah, you could. I mean, against an unarmored opponent, if you if you thrust with this powerfully while putting your body into it with footwork, I'm pretty sure this would penetrate. Um, probably not so good against armor in the thrust, but this does seem to be a cutter either way. Apparently intended primarily for single-handed use, even though the long grip allows for two hands. That's what I generally prefer. Just because I've done more two-handed sword practice and I'm not trained in Chinese swordsmanship anyway, so all I can do is just bastardize it basically with European techniques, which obviously it's not designed for. But either way, it's enough to use it, find out how well it's made. For the blade, LK Chen offers two options. This one here is made of GB60 SI2 MNA spring steel which unfortunately I couldn't find any information about on the internet when it comes to things like edge retention, toughness, hardness, wear resistance, all of this. I can just show you the components of this alloy. Otherwise, all I can say is from the test, it seems perfectly fine. It did stain a little bit from the tatami cutting in spite of wiping it down frequently, but not as much as some other blades I've tested. And uh, as far as the edge retention is concerned, that's always a little bit hard to judge because there's a lot of subjectivity going into it. Seems fine and the edge seems quite strong. It hasn't chipped or rolled from the testing, which makes sense because it's tempered to a hardness of HRC 56 to 58, which is quite hard. The alternative option is clay tempered T10 tungsten vanadium steel. So with the differential hardening, you get an edge hardness of HRC 56 and spine hard is a 40 to 45. So the edge overall is quite hard. The spine is softer for impact shock absorption. I don't think it's necessary. In fact, they say that the other option is the safer one for cutting, but of course the clay tempered one looks nicer. So for cutting practice, I would recommend this harder mono tempered version. It's got black iron fittings, which look quite nice. Uh, particularly this piece here, it's a nice, decorative touch and it's done in a very utilitarian nothing fancy sort of way so it makes it look visually more interesting but it is also pretty simple it's like a, a soldier's blade basically that applies to the scabbard too for that matter which is also quite simple wooden scabbard this got some cord wrapping and it fits the blade well there's not even any rattle at all like there's always going to be some degree of clicking noises unless it's padded so this is a really good fit like you can tell that this is not coming out but you can still draw it pretty quickly and easily so it's a simple but very well made scabbard i do like this one so it may look clunky and it does have a certain heft for its size in particular but if you look at the spine of the blade, you can immediately see that it's not as simple as it looks from the side because it's got quite a strong distal taper. It thins out significantly toward the point, which brings the balance closer to the handle than you would think. It's still not terribly close to the hilt. It is a dedicated, powerful cutting sword after all. Even though I prefer to use it with two hands, it's not difficult to wield single-handedly. It's the kind of sword for broad, sweeping, powerful cuts and keeping the momentum going as opposed to stopping it for position, which you can. It's just a little more exhausting than with a more nimble sword. 
it works quite well in that regard. And again, it's a powerful cutter. I use a number of different targets, water bottles with or without wooden dowel inside, sometimes wrapped in leather, tatami mats, obviously, with and without dowels, etc. So I got a pretty good amount of cutting done overall and also including some heavier chopping into wood. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of the footage of the harder testing that I took turned out to be useless. I overestimated how much daylight was left and uh, the camera just, the GoPro couldn't handle it. So it's garbage image quality, unfortunately grainy. You can barely see what's going on. So not particularly useful, but either way, just from doing that, I can tell that this is definitely robust with the only exception being the guard has just a little bit of play, you know, just enough that you can hear it and just slightly feel it as you move it around. It seems tight, but there's a little feel bit of, a little bit around. You tap it. Not enough to be a problem. And they were planning to take steps to improve that and make it even more durable. I don't know if they have yet. Either way, from the testing I've done, I don't see any problem. I haven't had any issue with it. For most people, you're not really gonna break this thing. Um, definitely not the blade itself. The tang, if you go really crazy, maybe, but for most reasonable use, shouldn't really be a problem but something to keep in mind. And speaking of keeping something in mind, this was sent to me as a free review sample. I don't feel particularly biased one way or another, but should always mention that. This is a flat grind with just a micro bevel at the end, and it does pass the thumbnail test. So it's sharp enough, particularly for a heavy chopper like this. And I didn't see any problems with it other than I found edge alignment a little bit difficult at times. I'm not quite sure why. Maybe I just have to practice more and get used to it. The handle shape is oval, basically. So it's wider than it's thick and it's fairly strongly rounded, which makes it comfortable. That might not um, make the edge alignment quite as easy, but I don't see any actual problem with the grip. So that's probably just me. <coughs> That looks gnarly on this side. Oh, like all like opened a... up. And the cord wrap is extremely tight too. The finish overall is flawless. I don't have any problem with it at all. I don't really have any problem with it in general. Like the only nitpick is the you know slight amount of play in the guard here. But otherwise it has performed nicely. I can't say much about historical accuracy because I simply don't know enough. Uh, generally LK Chen seems to take a lot of care in researching swords and reproducing them. All I can say is it's well made, it works well, it cuts nicely, all of that. And I find it easy to recommend. So if you're interested in this type of sword, check out the link down below, as well as specifications, all of that good stuff. Wow, it felt like the stick wasn't there. Hope you found it interesting. Thanks for watching and have a good one, folks. I'm just gonna enjoy the scenery a bit more here. It's a good day. camera's gonna have something nice to see. <laughs>
Yeah. <laughs>